today on Divorce Court. I'm here in Divorce Court today because I've caught Jose cheating at least five times. I do admit to cheating, but that was in the past. I do not feel Jose is a good provider for his family. I want the judge to tell Torino to calm down with her attitude. Jose, I want for you to be a better father for your children. My biggest issue with Torino's are that she nags a lot, that she complains a lot. I am ready to walk out of this marriage. Divorce Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Tarina Flores and Jose Flores. The two of you have been together for eight years, married for three and a half years. You have four children total, but you have three together. Mrs. Flores, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here to end it today? Judge, I'm here today because Jose is a, a liar and a serial cheater. And after eight years of being together, um, I'm just ready to walk. Okay. Jose and I met each other um, back in the sixth grade. I was 11 and he was 12. Um, we were each other's first. And after some time, Jose got kicked out of the school that we were going to. So he moved away, I moved away, and um, we lost touch. And after a couple years, I had a family member of his reach out to me and tell me that Jose had been looking for me um, and that he was incarcerated and he wanted me to write to him and come and see him. And I wrote to him and then we eventually set up a day um, for Jose and me to see each other. I went to visit him. He let me know that he was gonna be getting out soon um, and that he would like for me to come and visit him at a halfway house that they were gonna be sending him to. And so I did that and ever since then, um, we decided that we were going to enter into a relationship. Jose has done nothing but cheat. Mr. Flores, uh, what's your version of those events? Is that accurate? Those things occurred in that order? Pretty much, in yes. In that way? Yes. Can I ask you a question? I hate to be, I hate to be, everybody calls me a love curmudgeon because I don't believe in, you know, all this soulmate nonsense. Were you setting up a place to go? I mean, did you get your your sister to call? Yeah, I knew this girl. I'm gonna get her. Gonna get her to write right before I'm getting out. Then I'm gonna get a halfway house. So I got some guaranteed chick locked down, some money locked down, a place locked down. Was that what you were doing? She was one of the first girls I fell in love with when I was young. I mean, when you're young, you don't... I mean, what you know about love, you know? She was... I was 12 years old. Mm. We, we fell in love. And I mean, <laughs> ever, I mean, ever since we were so young, we always talked about, you know, getting married and, you know, she's black, I'm Mexican. We talk about having black chicken babies. <laughs> that's, that's Let me ask you this, Mr. Flores. Did you cheat on her as routinely as she indicates? No. It, so when I got out, I, I was sent to a halfway house. Right. Um, she came and visited me. This girl, she knew I was there. She came, I don't know where to visit. Uh, we went for a ride. She started touching me. She started undressing herself, and just one thing led to another. And I mean, I just couldn't help it. You and know, she was in front of me. Her in the park. I couldn't help it. She was in front of me. You can help it, even if she is in front of you. But have you done it repeatedly? No. That's not how true often enough. have you cheated on her since you've been married? How how many missteps did you make? She thinks I slept with other girls, but I, I haven't. There's been times where she called me talking to other girls and she assumes right away that I slept with them, which I, and I didn't. So, I mean, I know it's kind of bad what I did, but I don't consider it cheating all the way. What did you do that you considered kind of bad but wasn't cheating? I mean, I was talking to girls and I kissed them. Yeah, that's cheating. That's, that, is that cheating? It is! Your Honor. If it's something you wouldn't do in front of her, it's cheating. Your Honor, the thing is, is that when Jose came out, I asked Jose, before we made the commitment to enter into a relationship again, I asked Jose, was he sure that this was something that he wanted to do? Because I kind of felt like he was getting out young. You know, he might want to live a little. He might mm -hmm. want to pick up where he left off. He And I asked him, and Jose told me that he was sure that he wanted to start a family and he wanted to be... I did now, Miss Flores, that. let me fuss at you. 
You get a guy who writes you from prison and tells you he's about to get out, and you say, are you sure you want me? His answer's always going to be yes. He don't know no different. He don't, you know what I mean? He wants, wants to hook up with somebody. He's not in a position to have choices, so why would you give him one that he doesn't really consider and understand because he was never in a position to make it before? You can't just be... Women be silly with that, you know? I mean, everything wrong... I've noticed all of these problems, but I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah. What else would he say? I was serious, though. Oh, I know you were serious, but you didn't have enough... You didn't have enough behind you to make that kind of commitment. Mm -hmm. You were never a grown man out in the world fending off women. You were never a grown man in the world with options to have more than one woman and take one. That's why when the woman took off her clothes in front of you, you felt you had no option. Because you had no, you had no background to tell you that's not what a good dude does, right? I don't do that no more. You yeah, don't. When's the last time you did something inappropriate? <sighs> About close to four years ago. Has it been that long? That I've caught him. I haven't caught him, but I don't go, I don't go looking or seeking or fishing anymore. I've just kind of let things be for what they are. We Do have... you have continuing... Because four years ago, he may have aged I out of that I, nonsense. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to say it's been about four years ago because our daughter is three. Uh -huh. um, and she was born at the time, the last incident that I really caught. Um, Jose, uh, we had got new cell phones. And Jose was out partying. I had just came home from work. And I was looking for my cell phone so that I could input my old contacts and things from my old phone right. to my new phone. I happened to stumble across Jose's phone, and it was connected to the Wi-Fi, so I opened it, and I was being nosy. And, of course, when you go looking for sure. him, you're going to find it. And sure enough, I went into his messenger, and Jose had been communicating with the woman. At the time, I didn't know who it was. And they were having a discussion about um, meeting each other in this secret place and not having to find out or worry about it wow. because Jose told her that he was putting me out at the time we had oh, wow. at the time we had three children already he told her he was putting me out they wouldn't get caught she asked him to take okay. some time okay. off okay i'm going to give you i'm giving you an opportunity to respond but i want i want to give you an opportunity to res respond to that and also discuss when she was pregnant she feels like you abandoned her and i want to talk about both those things and i'll give you an opportunity to do so me and the girl, we didn't do nothing sexual. They didn't do anything sexual, but he kissed her. I, you were I, just prepping her in case she broke camp. You'd have the next one all queued up, ready to go. I was pregnant at the time when he became incarcerated. I went into labor early. They told me that they were not going to be able to save her. Things have been looking kind of bad for you, Mr. Flores, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to say what you have to say about what she's seeing, because you're saying she's seeing cheating that's not there. Why don't you tell me about that? I mean, she did see that in the phone. Right. We, we were... I was talking to the person uh -huh. as if, uh, you know, I was about to break up or something, but at that time, we were going through something. She was telling me that she was going to leave the house, so I assumed that our relationship was going to be over. So I, that's when I told the girl that she's going to be moving out soon. But me and the girl were not, we didn't do nothing sexually. Right. We, we just... You I, were I, just prepping her in case she broke camp. You'd have the next one all queued up, ready to go. Is that, is that it? They didn't do anything sexual, but he kissed her. But of course, to him, that's not cheating. Ms. Flores, why don't you tell me about when you were pregnant and why you felt abandoned by your husband? Jose became incarcerated um, again. And I was pregnant at the time when he became incarcerated. I went into labor early um, and they told me that they were not going to be able to save her. And I had to go visit Jose. And, and I didn't want to tell him over the phone that Thank you. That I had lost our daughter. I had a funeral for her in which I would like to present this to you. Um, uh, Nick, can I see that, please? I had a funeral for her. 
At was the he time, still inside or did he get out? He was still inside. At the time, um, we were not married, so I was unable... I was unable to have Jose be at her funeral. Oh, I can't, <laughs> and, I can't. And, and they wouldn't let him out because we were not married. If we were married, then I would have been able to pay to have him attend her funeral. So I had to have a funeral um, for my daughter without him. Um, I let his father choose my daughter's name because that was everybody's first grandchild. Nobody has daughters but us. Um, and that happened to be his first one. And um, he, he couldn't be there. Um, but on top of him not being there, Jose knew what I was going through before he left. Mm -hmm. And Judge, like I said, it didn't change him. He didn't do anything different. After your daughter died and he got out, was he better? No, he wasn't. He went back to partying. He went back to staying out all night. I had to beg him when my, when my kids needed things. You know, I have to beg Jose. His, some of his family members were helping more than he was. And he had a job, but Jose would have rather put his money towards partying and towards drinking and towards hanging out. He was just, he, he just didn't contribute I mean, anything. I was doing all that because we were going through a little phase. Our whole marriage has been phases. Okay. Yes. Mr. 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 Forrest, I'm going to give you a chance to get yourself together here a little bit because it can't be as dark as I'm saying. But I want to talk about how you participated, not only, you know, not let's forget the cheating, but your emotional and financial participation in the household once you got out that second time. I try to tell Jose every day that these kids need you. Do the streets still talk to you? They're still there, but I'm not... Everybody knows they're there. Would you leave your partner if they kiss someone else? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. So after you got out the second time, Mr. Flores, were you uh, uh, an active participating member in the family? I'm not going to sit here and lie. The first couple of years, no, I wasn't doing as much as I was supposed to. Mm -hmm. She was doing a lot for me and the kids. She, she, she carried the bearing by herself. She did everything by herself, and, you know, I'm forever grateful for that. Well, well let me ask you, and I understand it's difficult to get a job when you first get out. Were you there for her emotionally? She had just lost a baby. You had just lost a baby. She had been alone. Were you there for her as a husband? Not, not necessarily a provider, but the man who's going to hold down her heart and, and, and her love. Were you that guy? And like she said, our, our whole relationship, we've been going through a lot up and down. And every time we get into an argument or something, the first thing I do is run to the streets. Mm -hmm. wow. That's my comfort zone, you know? Like, and Judge, we, that's we my both fear. Came, we both came from different families. Mm -hmm. we, we broken down families. I, we, I, I had like nine brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And we were all separated mm -hmm. from the young age. Mm -hmm. So... When nobody was paying attention, mm -hmm. I ran to the streets, and mm -hmm. ever since I was a kid, though, I, you know, I mean, I feel like the streets raised me. Yeah. Do the streets still talk to you? They Every do. Every day. Are you still in them? I'm stuck in between. That means you're still there. I'm gonna tell you, that, that means you're still there. Because that means it can call you. That means you'll go there when things get difficult. So that means you're not man enough to say, I'm done with that. Because a man who was done with that can say, oh, no, I ain't I about that life no I was done with it no for more. a while. Uh, what? We were, I was done with it for a while. I wasn't, I wasn't doing nothing. I was just working and everything. But like How I said, How long we, was yeah, that we, while? I don't know. I've, it was a while to me, close to a year or so, I think. I don't know. Bianca, one year out of eight, it's not. We have three... He has three boys looking up to him, and he has a daughter that loves him like no other. And I try to tell Jose every day that these kids need you. He spoke on how we came from broken homes. I don't want that for my children. Mm -hmm. I need him around for my children. I know what it feels like to have not grown up with a father, and I don't want that for my daughter. I don't want that for my boys, you know? And I tell Jose, be an example. And he may try, and he, he does think that that year is something, but our kids are forever. And 
they need him. And I need Jose to understand that they need him. They need him. I need him for them because there is only so much that I can teach my boys. Mm -hmm. You know, there is only so much that I can tell my daughter. You know, there's his part, too, and Jose doesn't understand that. Mr. Flores, whether or not uh, you can save this marriage, I don't know. Whether or not I would even recommend her to stay in this marriage, I don't know. But no matter what happens, your obligation to those children never ends. And your obligation to those children should not come second to the streets. And I'm going to talk to you about what it is to be a man and a father and a grown person who can do the tough stuff in the tough times and not revert to the wrong thing. Would you marry someone who has been incarcerated more than once? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I know what culture can do to a person. When you are raised in an environment, the pressures, the, 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 the idiosyncrasies, the ideas, what everybody's doing, how you manage problems, how you manage upsets, how you manage disagreements, all of that is informed by the people that are around you. And if you didn't have a solid background where somebody was, say, was telling you the right thing to do and how to have a family and how to deny yourself things and how to manage things and how to do things that are not in the street, you don't have anything to work with. And I get that part. I really, really do get that part. But be man enough not to continue to destabilize your children by destabilizing her. If you aren't man enough to commit, and things are going to be rough. Two years and I didn't even like my husband. <laughs> but we stayed together. Didn't nobody run off? Didn't nobody have sex with nobody else? Didn't nobody go, go get high, go in the streets and that? We, you know, we just circled each other in steely silence, but we stayed in the house. And until you're able to do that, don't try to get her back. You see what I'm saying? Because you love her that much, and you love your children that much. See your kids every day. You with me? I'm with you. Now you, <laughs> over there, don't let him come back unless you trust him. Don't let him come back because you're lonely. If he shows you he's a better man, let him, let him, let him creep back in increments. Never keep him from his children. Never make that hard for him. Do you with me with that? I don't care how mad you are. If he's out there, you see him in the street with, with 20 women naked. <laughs> and he comes to the kid tomorrow to pick him up. You say, hey, Jose, how you doing? That's what you do. Because what you guys got going on got nothing to do with those children. You with me on that one? Yes. I think this man is trying. I don't think he's good at it yet, <laughs> but I think he's trying. But I say don't let him back until he's proven, because trying ain't enough. Amen. But I support your efforts, Amen. and this matter is adjourned. The judge gave you a lot of advice. Is there anything she said that's going to encourage you to give this man another chance? No. No? Nothing? Nothing. How do you think co-parenting is going to work out between the two of you? As long as we stick to it being about the kids, it'll work perfect. I feel like he could change. Maybe not now. Anything inside of you says that maybe down the road you guys could work this out? If Jose puts his children first, that will probably be the only thing that would make me consider mm -hmm. giving him another chance.